Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm doing a repeat of a video that I made in 2016 and that is a double Z fold. This one is a humorous card which I don't do often at all. Um, no reason for it. Um, I just don't. I used the Way to Goat stamp set and on the front of here we have a goat that's dancing happy because it's your birthday inside we have this goat looking at this one as if he's lost his marbles and this one totally oblivious he's in love which is why he's got the flower and just to finish it off two bees have noticed the flower so they are making a bee line for it <gasps> sorry about that but it's a humorous card so i really hope you enjoy this the card that I made in 2016, which I was looking at the other day, for some reason I gave the inches for North American um, cardstock, that's letter size cardstock, and metric sizes for letter size cardstock. I know that was shortly after I'd started making videos, but I don't know why I did it like that. So today what I'm going to do is, in the video I'm going to give you inches for A4 cardstock users. Yes, you could use the same sizes at, as letter size cardstock, but if we go for our size, it does make this a bit wider, um, a tad higher. So um, the video, as I say, will give inches for A4 cardstock users. In the box below I will give you metric for A4 cardstock users and I will also give you inches for North American sizes which is letter size cardstock. Now I'm not going to use this, this same stamp set which is this one. Um, the reason I'm not going to use it is because even for me there was a lot of fussy cutting in this one. Um, if you don't like fussy cutting, you will not like this at all. Um, it was my limit as well. So the stamp set I'm going to be using now, well three actually, I'm going to be using Badger Besties. So if you don't mind a bit of fussy cutting, these are really easy in comparison to Way to Goat. Um, for my sentiment, now this is what I've been using quite a lot recently, and this is from All Squared Away, happiest of birthdays to you. And on the inside, I'm using Inspired Thoughts, which is, it's your time to be remembered, to feel appreciated, and to know you're celebrated, which I think is a really lovely sentiment. If I move those all over there, I'm going to tell you the cardstock we're going to be using. Now the card base and the DSP is going to be the same but hopefully it's going to come up looking really quite different. So, first of all, we need a piece of cinnamon cider, which measures 4 one eighth inches by 11 and a half inches. Another piece of cinnamon cider, which measures one and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. And then basic white, you need two pieces that measure two and five eighths inches by three and seven eighths inches one piece of five and a half by three and seven eighths inches and two pieces that measure seven eighths of an inch by two and five eighths inches one piece that measures seven eighths of an inch by five and a half inches and then for the main design on your designer series paper which is this one at the back here with the green this one. This measures, oh we need the little ones, no we, yes we, no we don't, yes we do. Oh right, okay. So we need one smaller piece which measures two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches and one piece that measures five and three eighths inches by three and three quarter inches. And for the brick wall, uh, you need two pieces that are three quarters of an inch wide and two and a half inches deep. 
and one piece that is three quarters of an inch wide by five and three eighths inches. You will also need a scrap of cinnamon cider for the layer on the sentiment. Just jade for a layer on the sentiment on this one here. I don't know whether you noticed but there is a, a scalloped circle under there and just jade. And then white, basic white, for scraps for your images and also for your um, sentiment. Now before I go on I just want to explain about this designer series paper. I took it from the sheet that is like this and what I did for the first card, this one, I cut this at six inches and then I cut the bottom off. So I had as much white as possible on here. So that's almost white all the way on the top half. But what I've done for this card, I put my trimmer so that I could cut it off just above the tallest green piece. And then I measured down, I think this is three and three quarters, wasn't it? Yes, and I just cut it down. So on this one, I'm going to have more green up here. Where did I put my greenery? Let me show you this one. So this piece came from here. And this one came from here. Okay, so I've got as much um, green. So on this one, it will be more greenery at the back here and a bit more on that one. I quite often find these designs a bit difficult to use. Um, that's quite a useful um, design, but I wanted a bit of colour in mine anyway. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do some scoring and we're going to score our two pieces of cinnamon cider. So I'm going to be using my trimmer. And we don't need to open this up with our first piece we are going to score at two and seven eighths and then move it along and score at five and three quarters We will be working on the piece with the two small sections and then the big section. And then with this piece, you're going to do exactly the same. So that score at two and seven eighths inches. Move along to five and three quarter inches. Now with this piece, we'll be using it so we've got the long piece on this side and the two small pieces this side, which is the opposite to that one. Okay, two small pieces there. I don't know if you can see my score lines or not. Let's just fold it so you can. Okay, I'll burnish these in a minute. Okay, so it's be fitting together like that. So that's all we need the trimmer for. Now, first of all, I'm going to do my burnishing. And make sure that you get these done straight. And then this one, you want one mounted and one valley. Okay, your first one on this one is mounting. In fact, they're the same. The first one on this is a mountain, but it's a smaller one. Make sure it lines up really nicely. and then burnish this. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our stamping. Now, I've already done my images 
and I can't see, oh yes I can see them, um, and I've coloured them because it was a little bit time consuming and then fussy cut them, but I'm still going to do the stamping with you today. Um, so that's my images, that's for the inside sentiment and that's for my circle sentiment. So those two are going to be done with my Stamparatus. This is going to be done freehand. So this is Happiest of Birthday Wishes and I'm using Just Jade. No, I'm not. I'm using Soft Succulent. Sorry. Oh, does that mean so I've got the wrong paper out there? Maybe. Let's compare it to this one. Hmm. I don't know. Let me just check that. Yes, I've got just jade here, but it won't matter. They're very, very similar in colour. Um, but it should be just jade. I will put the correct details in the box underneath the video. As you know, I like to... I normally stamp off before I do any stamping. Yes, that's good. Let's turn that over. That's good. Happy with that. That will need to be die cut. And then I need my Stamparatus with Black Memento ink. probably seen me do this before where if I've got several images like this I do them in one go. Now, let me get a stamp set back so I can prop it up underneath here. Right, let me see am I in shot for you. Let's make sure that that is in the right place. When I did the first ones for the video, I had a much bigger piece. And because it was a bigger piece, I could go right to the corner there. There we go. You should be able to see all of this now, I think. I love using my Stamparatus for stamping because it means if I do it too light, then I can just re-ink and go over the images again. Okay, I would like that a little bit darker. And that should do it. There we go, beautiful. So that's that one. Let's move that out of the way. And this is the other one. If you've never seen me do this before, to make sure that I've got my stamp correct, uh, straight when it's doing straight lines, I start off by putting my paper in that I'm going to be stamping on. I'll put the stamp face down on there to what I think looks straight and then bring this down pick it up but before I stamp on here I stamp it on here okay you can see where I've been practicing over there and those two weren't straight so I brought it over third time lucky um, and that was it sorted and then once I'd done the first card I left it there because I knew that I'd be using it again today fine. Uh, soft succulent. In fact, I think it was just JD that I should have been using. Hold on, let me just check the paper. Yes. So the paper, the coloured cardstock is correct. It was my ink that was wrong. So I'm going to redo this one. I need my 
adhesive eraser for that just to make sure I can get that off yes okay let me just do, do this one again uh, right so that's going to be the wrong colour oh much darker look at that So that's ready and I'm going to use this for here as well. I love this font. To me it looks very um, 20s, 1920s like uh, flapper girls and what have you before my time obviously <laughs> there we go that's lovely so that doesn't need die cutting that does and that's going to be fussy cut not today but when I get around to doing that I move that that and that oh, oops you may have noticed on this card that the sheep there I've actually used the grounding stamp to make sure that he doesn't look as if he's floating in the air although I have to say I should have gone a bit higher because his back legs look as if he's floating um, so I've got my stamp here for that one just in case I need it and it's from the way to goat stamp set okay it may be that when I put the goat uh, the uh, badger in there it may be that it's right in the greenery anyway so I don't need to do anything about it right I'm going to start putting my card together and what you need to do is you need to have your big piece your thick piece with your mountain valley like that and you're going to put that there, that there, those two there, and this one in the center. Okay. I should have got myself another bottle of um, Tombow ready, but never mind. There should be enough in here to see me through. Oops, I don't know what I should be doing. It's not so bad when I'm working um, on my own. I can keep getting up and down because these I keep behind me. Um, but I do miss my silicone mat if I don't have it. There's nothing worse than trying to work on a sticky piece of grid paper. There we go, that's that one. Let's do this one. When I first made this card back in 2016, I thought it was a card that I'd designed myself. I hadn't seen it before um, and it was very, very popular and eventually I did see that somebody had made it and I can't remember who it was it might have been somebody like Split Coast Stampers or maybe somebody like Trimcraft it certainly wasn't a um, stamping up demonstrator but as one of the stamping up demos UK stamping up demos said there's no such thing as a new design and I am very inclined to go ahead, agree with her on that. Right, so we can put these on here now. I'm sending out my new 
Christmas catalogues, Christmas mini catalogues to my customers in the next three or four days. Um, and also going with it is a letter offering them to, if they'd like to take part in a paper share. If you've not heard what a paper share is, it's where people are invited to buy a quarter sheet of every designer series paper or foil sheets, whatever is in the new catalogue, they can buy a quarter sheet of it, that's a six by six. Whereas if they bought one packet of everything, it would cost £175, which is a huge amount. Um, they can buy six by six sheets from me and including postage is only £48. And what I've done with it is because we're having our second celebration starting 3rd of August, which is when the new catalogue goes live, I've also done it that I've put in a couple of Christmassy bits from the catalogue and they are gold leaves and pre-cut snowflakes, large ones, a bit like a doily. And I've got the price up so that everybody who goes for the paper share can also choose a gift from the celebration catalogue, their brochure. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, email me at jambi at jambicards.com. Unfortunately, I can only take orders from crafters who live in the UK, Netherlands, France, Germany and Austria. They're stamping up rules, not mine, I'm afraid. So if you're interested, you don't have to be a customer of mine. You can be a demonstrator if you like, um, because I do find that it appeals to hobbyist dem demonstrators who join just to get the um, discount on their shopping. Um, anybody can join in. But you may find that your the demonstrator you normally work with is already offering it, so you may want to check with them first. Right, now when you put this one in, make sure you, you put them all up the right way. And I know from the last one that I need to have the thinnest strip of bricks up at the top. So yeah, just drop me a line at jambi at jambicards.com. The postage, if you live in Europe, the postage will be an extra four or five pounds. I don't know yet because I haven't um, had a chance to get them all weighed um, because obviously postage is quite a lot more to Europe. But you will be able to choose which celebration gift you have. It won't be something that I've selected for you. So it's very good value for money. And it has been very popular. Right, there we go, that's that. So now we can put them on here. As I said, we work with the long piece on the left-hand side with this one. During celebration, as always, there's a special promotion for people who want to join. Um, if you want to join as a hobbyist, just to get your discount, which you're very welcome to, or to be a business builder, like me, which I have to say is a lot of fun, very rewarding. Um, but the deal is for your £99 starter kit, you normally choose £130 worth of products and that's still the deal, you choose the £130 of any products you would like from the Christmas catalogue or the main catalogue but on top of that there are 12 different bundles that you can choose free to go with your starter kit and I was working out the other day, I think the cheapest bundle 
is £33 and that has a, what was that, £29? One or the other, but it comes with a punch. And the most expensive one was about £55. So if you, cho if you liked the biggest one and you chose that, you would be getting um, amazing value. Um, now this, these are mine, what I've already done. Okay, and obviously that took quite a lot to do to get the dark colour. So I'm not going to do all of one, I'm just going to show you how I did it. Oh, and something else, somebody asked me a little while ago, where did I get these from? And these are the stickers on the end of my stamping blends and I've at long last found the link to them. They are from a stamping up demonstrator here in the UK um, and it's a free download so I'll put the link to Sarah's uh, website in the blog uh, in the post below. Now to colour these what I've used is dark smoky slate and I did everything this Bring one over. I did everything apart from the white bit there and this one I opened his eyes for him as well as you know I don't like closed eyes. All right. So let me just show you by doing this bit here. Feels like I need a new pen. The way that I drew the opened his eye was where it's a half circle there. I just did a half circle on top of it. So that he had a bit of white all the way around it. Now with this I just went over it again and again until it looked solid. And what you will find is it gets like, if you looked at it really, really closely, it looks as if it's almost um, gone white speckly. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yes, you can. Well, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it coming through on the video. Can you see how the body is like white speckly? And that's because it is so thick, the colour. Okay. I just go over it and over it and over it. But as I say, these were really very easy to fussy cut. It was only the bit with the flower, but if you wanted to, you could always just cut that off. Right, so that's those. Then I fussy cut those. Obviously, I'll do those later because you don't want to sit there for goodness knows how long. I'm going to just get my big shot over so that I can do my die cutting, which is that, that, and that. Now, the dies I used for this are my layering circles dies and I used number two and number three of the straight cut circles and I used number two of the scallop circle. So if I just pop those there for a moment So this one is going to be the smallest straight circle. Just pop that in the centre. The cinnamon cider is the second straight circle. And then, in fact, let me move you up a bit. Oops. one I'm just going to pop in the corner there
So we have one scallop circle. One straight cut circle. Oh, I think that might have been rubbish. I'll check that later. And then a straight one. So that goes out. Okay, so we finished with this. So I'm going to adhere these bits together. Now sometimes with this, um, I find that there's little bits of cardstock get caught inside the scallops. So I just go through with my tweezers or paper piercer and just knock the pieces off. Let me see if you can see these as they're coming down. It only takes a few seconds to do this and I think it's worth it. It certainly makes the scallops more obvious. There we go, there's one. There we go. Not much there because most of it went down on this one. Okay, so Tombow. bits there as well. There we go, that's good. Um, some of those need to be glued on. But first I'm going to put my brick wall on. Okay. So that's the way it's going to be going. Now I like mine about three quarters of an inch up from the base of my card there. You could put this anywhere if you wanted right at the top you could. Um, obviously you'd have problems standing those up. They would have to come down a bit. Um, so what I do is I turn this over so that I can work on the back. And with a pencil, which I don't think I brought over with me, let me have a look and see if I can reach one. Oh, come on, pencil, you can't be that far away. Oh, I can see one. It is that far away. There we go. Okay. So what I do, I measure up about three quarters of an inch. And I draw a very faint pencil mark there and I say faint because that piece is going to be covered up and I won't be able to erase it okay so there's my three quarters so I can get both ends correct the other thing that I do is this strip is the same length as this therefore that must start there and finish at the end there together. So I need to know where to put my glue on here so that it doesn't go in the wrong place. I start by putting a pencil mark here which lines up with the start of that designer series paper and a mark down here which lines up with the end of the designer series paper. I do the same on this side that lines up with the start of the designer series paper and that's where it starts down here as well. Now on the other side it's a little bit different because you could
put your glue right the way up to the edge here. I do it so that I've got probably, um, I'm not sure even that that's eighth of an inch. Right, so on this one it's level with where the designer series paper is and there as well. Now I find that it's easier to do one piece at a time. So I'm going to do this end first. So I'm putting my glue in between my two pencil lines. I'm going to turn this over. I have my pencil line here so my base is just going to come down and cover that up. I'm going to pick a line right there we go that moves that over a bit. I don't know if you can see this on yes you can. Okay so I'm using the lines on here to line up with my pencil mark Make sure that's straight along there and then that is straight as well and that's straight. So this one is going to come over, I'm going to pop it on there just a bit lower so that it covers that up and then I know that this has got to go straight so that it lines up this side as well. Okay so it's lining up here but that is telling me something's wrong. where it's got to come down. One, two, three, above. One, two, three, above. That's better. I wasn't going in a straight line. Not surprising, as you know, I can't see straight lines. So, holding, now that I know that that is in the right place, I'm just going to fold this back, hold it, And then I'm going to put Tombow by my pencil marks. And I'm going to come right down towards the edge. I'm not going right on the edge because I don't want the glue oozing out. Okay, so over it goes. I've obviously let that move a bit. Straighten up on my grid lines. One, two, three, that's it. And you also need to close it to make sure it all goes down. There we go, look, see that's not straight there. There we go. This is a great ruler, it just pushes that back into position. And yes, I've got my three quarters of an inch, let me just, yes, yes, so that's good, I'm pleased with that. Now with this, I normally try and do it so that it comes just over the edge there, because it can come a tad over, about an eighth of an inch, and still fit into my envelope. This will fit into your regular stamping up envelopes. Um, the A2 size if you're in North America. What you need to take into account, two things. One, when you put something on this, if you put something on this, like that, say for example, when you open it, you don't want that interfering with your sentiment. Okay, so that's why that last one, I put him there and that one I actually pulled down because it was too much white there but this one I could go up. Now if I put that one there in fact I think I want it which way are these three going? I want him over here so I can do the B's again but I might put him down there and then this one no he can go that side can't he because he's looking at him and he looks away. Okay, so that's how I'm going to be doing my 
badges. So what I'm going to do with this one first, I'm going to glue him down. So his feet are down here, at the bottom of the brick wall. Needs to tilt forward slightly, that's all right. Looks as if he's trying to fly with his arms like that. But then underneath there, I'm going to put some dimensionals. So I'll use one complete one for his head, one of the bigger ones. I'm going to put glue up that far, but I don't want dimensionals any lower than that. Okay, so it's about there. So I'm going to use the small dimensionals now. Oh, that's good. Got two at the same time. Get my little scissors. My uh on stick scissors just see if I can get two little bits to support his arms right, that's the smallest piece that's a nice narrow piece but a bit longer don't think I'll worry about his snout okay so I'm going to take these off and I'm going to put the glue on and I can adhere him in place. There we go. So I need some glue on his body now. come up too high on this bit otherwise you'll find the glue goes over the wall <laughs> the wall isn't doesn't give any like real depth coming down here it's just like one two three four layers of paper but I prefer to have his head and his body popped up with dimensionals. No, I forgot, I might have gone over the edge there, have I? Yep. That dimensional is too close. There we go, so I'm going to just move it over. Okay because I'm putting him central I didn't think about that bit there and I've got a little bit of glue there which I will take off later with my adhesive remover okay so that's him and then I said I put this one here, didn't I? So because he's it here, he's not going to be folded inside. I can put his head on dimensionals as well, or his upper body, I should say. Put that one there. Now I want him to come up a little bit higher. If I make him stand down there. Oh, I don't know, that's okay, yeah. I was thinking if I make him come higher, then I would need some kind of ground grounding. I mean, like this one looks, because he's right at the bottom, he's on the white bit. And I'm only going to put one more dimensional there. 
and then I'm going to put glue on his lower part. I really ought to do more humorous cards because I have enjoyed doing this and making up a little story about it, like the one who's dancing because it's your birthday and the bees saw the flowers. Oops, let's take these off first. I'm sure children would love these, although having said that I wouldn't do bees for the if it was children because it would be a choking hazard. My first idea was to actually stamp some birds on there, which would be okay for children. You could just get birds flying up there. There's some good birds in the Sailing Home set. So there we go, that's him. And now he, here, if I stamp him here, does he need any grounding. He probably does, doesn't he? And I've left him a bit high. So what I'm going to do, turn my card round and see if you can see what I'm doing here. He needs some... you're not going to see this very well. Oh yes, he needs some grounding down here otherwise it looks as if he's walking through the trees. If I put grounding on it's going to make the trees be like the background. So what I'm going to do is I have my stamp and I think what I'll do is I'll use cinnamon cider so it looks like he's either on sand or soil of some sort. Although, would he really be seen? Probably not, but I'll do the grounding anyway. I don't think anybody's likely to look here. But if they do, at least they will know you've paid attention to detail. Okay, can you see what I've done there? Yep, you can. Okay, so all I've got to do now is make sure his feet land on that, which is what I didn't do with the goats. <coughs> And I'm going to glue all of him down because he's inside the card. There we go. Just open up to make sure he's going right the way down. Yep, there we go. Make sure he's standing straight. There we go, so that's that. We need to put this on. So I think, I'm not going to put this on dimensionals, but I am going to make it come off the edge slightly, so which is a top bit. I don't want glue at that end. Okay, I have left a lot more than what is going over the top. It, this one doesn't have to be straight, you could do it at an angle if you like. And that's a small amount that I allow it to come over and that will still go in the envelope. So the final touch for this one is obviously my bumblebees. This is the end of my third packet. <laughs> I really do like bees. And I think these are much nicer than the ladybirds we had previously because the ladybirds were so dark. Although painting them did make them, I painted the bodies red and that did make them look a lot brighter. Oops, I didn't pick up the dot there. Oh. There we go. And I'd just like to put a little dot of glue where these are coming. Like that one. 
Oops, I got one stuck to my finger now. And again, I try to keep these so they're not going underneath because if they're posted, that's going to make a dent in the card. Oh no, oh, okay, that's all right. So where do we want you? We could have you coming from here somewhere. Look as if you're heading for that, maybe it's a flower rather than a leaf. Okay. That's not straight, is it? Well, never mind. So there we go. That's to cut Daddy's card, don't you think? It's brilliant. It's such a simple design, but so a simple design, but it really does pack a wow. So there we have that one, and there we have the one with the goats. So really, it's which one do you feel like fussy cutting, or use another animal that you do have a punch to, or dies. Um, coming in the celebration, I think it's a celebration stamp set, but there is one with three sheep. And there are dies to go with that as well, so that would work really well with this if you don't like the uh, die cutting. Many thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this fun card. I will put all the measurements in the box below the video together with all the products that I've used. And I'll also make a note of score lines because obviously for the North America sizes, they will be different from the uh, A4 cardstock sizes. Um, if you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one, please click the subscribe now button down there and then click on the bell and that means you'll get the notifications. Don't forget about my paper share. If you're interested, email me at jambi at jambicards.com and I will also remember to put the link in for these. I forgot to mention what I actually did was I coloured all the things with the right um, blender pen. It took a little bit extra time but it was worth it. You just need a 3 8 inch punch um, and glue dots. They're just on the glue dots. Okay, but it's a great idea. So many thanks to Sarah, Sarah Berry for sharing. So many thanks for being with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, please take care and stay safe. Happy crafting. Cheerio.